folks, Kevin Inouye here again from Fight Designer LLC for another pew 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 tube. I've been uh, busting out the 3D printer again now that I'm home a little bit more with the semester over, uh, so I can kind of babysit the thing and, and stop it if it starts to turn into spaghetti. Um, and I had a, a company from Chicago coming in wanting to rent uh, four rubber M4s for a police raid thing. And uh, I realized I didn't have matching, even like sort of matching scopes. Uh, I, I have a weird grab bag of things in my inventory in general. Uh, and I figured I'd try and do something along the lines of these uh, EOTech scopes. Now this is a, a cheap airsoft replica kind of thing. Um, it sort of lights up, but it's obviously not a real holographic sight. It's full plastic, um, but you know, it was 25, 30 bucks instead of the eight or 900 that a, a real EOTech would be. Uh, here's another one similar. Uh, again, like they, they've actually got some of the fake <laughs> trademarks and stuff. Uh, again, sort of lights up. This one, yeah, you get a, a little red dot there, but not actually on target. It doesn't fit well. Um, this is the more recent Eotex with a different battery compartment. Um, and, uh, you know, so just trying to dress these rubber rifles up with a, a little bit of something. This one, uh, if you tighten the screw on the bottom here, we get a uh, laser, or if you flip this over, tactical leg, or both. Anyway, I like to, to dress my rubber rifles up. One of my pet peeves is people with flat top M4s with no sights at all, not even iron sights. So it's like, how are you aiming this thing? What are you looking at? So I do try to put something on them, and I, I find that having something at least somewhat functional, like the like the flashlights, can can really help sell the illusion uh, that this is an actual functional prop, even though the prop itself is just solid rubber. Uh, and I've been doing some paint touch-ups and things as well. But uh, what I did to to get the um, EOTex is I went to Thingiverse and busted out the old 3D printer and got that warmed up again. And so I started printing out some of these. Now, um, this one's actually scaled down to about 80, 85% because I found that that worked a little bit better for, for some of the more modern ones. Um, but, uh, and, I, and I had to steal the base from a different one. But this is the thing about Thingiverse. It's, it's kind of a Wikipedia open source sharing of 3D files for 3D printing. Uh, and there were a couple different versions of EOTech scopes. So I'll put the link to, this, to the ones that I use down below. Um, so I stole the, the two-part Picatinny rail mount from one, and I, you know, I just have to use normal bolts for that. Uh, and uh, went to a couple different sources for some of the scopes themselves. This is the uh, original site, uh, original size that that one prints at, uh, and this is the size of some of the, the early Eotex. Now when these printed, they had a solid uh, black, well, black because that's the color I was using to print with. A uh, solid panel in front and back. I went ahead and, and cut that out actually using a, a foam cutter, like a heated knife originally for cutting styrofoam. But that actually worked fine on this uh, on this PLA 3D printed plastic. Uh, at least to get the rough thing and then just neat it up a little bit with the Dremel or a file. So that now it is open, which looks a little bit better if you happen to catch a view of it. Um, but I, I thought that was maybe a little too big uh, for some of what I wanted to do. Again, got to work in lights on all these. Um, this one has a little flip up that rear sight too. Um, and so I, I went ahead and scaled it down a little bit for most of these. So I printed out a few of these. Uh, I think that's a, that's a decent size. Um, I mean, this, this style of sight, because EOTech was so popular uh, and so expensive, a number of companies decided, hey, we can do that cheaper. Um, so this is... Uh, uh, you know, a, a fairly common holographic sight pattern now. Um, again, most of them are now using smaller battery compartments than the, the AA kind of things, and so that's maybe not the most up-to-date, but I can't really get into Blender and figure out how to create a new one myself yet, or a 3D scan one. I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm still figuring this technology out. But the fact that I can just download a source file, scale it, rotate it, whatever, print it out, is pretty cool. Um, something like this takes about... I don't know, it takes about a day, 12 hours, something like that. You can hear the printer going in the background. It's actually working on something different right now, which maybe I'll share later. Um, but, uh, you know, given that a spool of, of filament costs 20, 22 bucks, something like that, unless you get it on sale, uh, and you could print, you know, at least a half dozen of these, probably more, um, that's not a bad deal. 
Uh, and the fact that I can just dress these up for my for my rubber rifles, these are all solid one piece M4s, uh, and it'll uh, it's not quite as durable as the hard rubber probably. Um, and I'm sure if you drop this on the wrong spot, it will snap off. Uh, but you know, it's not bad. It's not bad. And I did a little finishing on these with some spray paint and stuff, but. Uh, you know, if it gets scuffed up, it's black plastic underneath, so it'll look just fine still. So I'm, I'm fairly happy with how they turned out. Um, I think it'll be, a, I think it'll be a, a decent option to have now to dress these rifles up uh, for a looking like this, where it's just, uh, you know, honestly, probably a, an establishing or wide shot of a, a police raid on a building or something. I don't actually know what the project is. <laughs> I'm just renting them props. But uh, anyway. That's uh, that's one of the things I've been up to lately, and I'll share some more projects with you when I can. If you've been using a 3D printer, I'd love to hear what you're doing with it. Uh, if you've got good websites that you're finding files on, if you have tutorials on adjusting things in Blender and, and doing sort of remixes of of uh, some of these files uh, or recommendations, you know, I'm I'm still I'm still putzing around with this, and I'm so happy when I can actually make it work and not have it turn into just piles of plastic spaghetti in my 3D printer. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if you have suggestions, if you have feedback, if you have questions, if I can't promise I'll have answers. If you have answers, I might have questions. Um, love to hear from you. Oh, and those of you who are SAFD members, in June I'll be doing the, um, oh, what do they call it, the, the uh, it's not the Masterclass series, the, the, the I don't know. They, they have these, like, train at home series that is uh, a live broadcast and then also viewable on YouTube for the next month or something after that. So I'll be doing one of those on uh, sort of firearms handling for actors. Um, or if you happen to be in the Twin Cities area, Minneapolis, St. Paul, I'll be up there for the Brawl of America later this month. Or uh, also more recently in the works and still not on the website with my name at least, I will be at Combat Con in Vegas in July. So if you happen to make it to any of those and you've been watching these videos, let me know. Say hi. Um, maybe, we'll, uh, maybe we'll get you in one. So until next time, have fun, stay safe, look good, uh, stay sane, <laughs> and uh, uh, take care. And I uh, don't forget to click uh, like, subscribe if you want more of these, and shoot me any questions you might have. Uh, I do this all volunteer, so I'm always happy to feel like I may be actually making a difference or someone's listening as I shout out into the void.